the problem with armed drone use is they're very, very good at assassinating people. And what the United States has done is involve itself in a number of secret wars in places like Yemen, Somalia, Pakistan, where the legality of those conflicts is very disputed and also the outcome of those conflicts is very disputed. So, for example, they've been very good at suppressing terrorist groups like Al-Qaeda, but those same terror groups have then manifested elsewhere. And overall, we couldn't really say the world is a safer place now, 10 years after, 15 years after the use of armed drones. So I think the jury is still out on some of the ways that we use drones. And in some of the places we use drones, they're very controversial indeed. When President Obama came in in 2009, he had a choice. He could have stopped the targeted killings just as he did with torture. But in fact, I think it proved too appealing to him. One of the interviewees in the book describes drones for the Obama administration as addictive as catnip. I think whoever is the next president of the United States is going to have to make a similar choice. The drone targeted killings, the assassinations, not the stuff on the regular battlefield, the stuff in Pakistan and Yemen and Somalia is hugely globally controversial and in many ways very damaging to the US's reputation. So whether it's a President Clinton or a President Bush or whoever comes into the White House in 2017, they're going to have to decide, do I keep these killings or do I let them go? And it's going to be very interesting indeed to see what choice they make.